The shift in retail from bricks towards clicks has had well-documented ramifications for many British high streets. But our next entrepreneur, Northumbrian Chris Reed, believes he's come up with an idea which could revitalise the fortunes of our ailing town centres. I don't think there's a week goes by without some sort of headline which tells us how badly the high street's doing. And we think we've got the silver bullet. And dad of four, Chris, already has at least one backer outside the den. For my eldest daughter, she's uh, incredibly supportive. She wrote me a little note which said, you're an inspiration. I'm welling up now, so just uh, be careful. Hello, Dragons. My name is Chris Reed. I'm the founder of Proxy Smart Limited. I'm here looking for an investment of £80,000 in exchange for 32% in equity. Now then, six out of 10 town centre businesses cite car parking as their biggest barrier to trade. Why? Because it's a long established pain point for consumers. You ever had to rush back to your car because your ticket was about to expire? You ever had to queue to validate your ticket just so you can get out of a car park? Even the current crop of pay by phone options have got you scratching around looking for a location code or worse still, you're shouting down the phone at a voice recognition robot which just doesn't understand a Geordie accent. <laughs> We've created a multi-award winning solution which removes all of these issues and we call it Parking Perks. Parking Perks offers consumers hassle-free, cost-free car parking. And we use this as leverage to uplift footfall, sales and loyalty in offline town centre businesses. So how does it work? Well, we use smart beacons like these which we deploy in and around car parks and parking spaces. When you arrive at a car park, a wireless handshake between the beacon and your smartphone triggers a proactive message. It'll say something like, hello, Deborah, welcome to York Street Car Park. Are you parking your Ford Fiesta? And you simply <laughs> tap yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can manage your parking event and be on your way in under 10 seconds. And best of all, it can also be free because when you make qualifying purchases at participating merchants in the town centre, you will earn a credit that you can use to reduce or eliminate the cost of your parking. With your help and your investment, we're looking to change the way you stay and the way you pay for your car parking. Thank you, I'll take any questions. A mobile phone app which boosts high street spending whilst saving you money on parking is the offering from Chris Reed. Chris is seeking £80,000 in return for a 32% share of his parking business. Jenny Campbell is first to take the concept out for a spin. Chris, hi. hi By the way, mine's a Jaguar F5. <laughs> Before you ask, it's not for you. No, no. <laughs> um, it's a neat idea, actually. Thank you, thank you. You drive in the car park and your phone suddenly goes bleep bleep, you're in this car park. Do you want to use this app to park today? And do you want to use the vouchers that you earned in McDonald's? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Done. Absolutely, this is exactly what it's all about. I just need to download the app and, and, and off I go. OK. Yeah, absolutely. And what is your background? Well, I've, I've been in software primarily for the last sort of <clears throat> 29 years or so. Uh -huh. I took a business to a successful trade sale, uh, to a PLC. How much for? 2.2 million. And how much of that was yours? 500,000. OK, good. Unfortunately, the next business I set up, which again was in software, um, became a victim of the recession. OK. And how much of your 500,000 did you lose? Uh, all of it. <laughs> Whoa! Gosh. Yes, so it's been a tough couple of years, and mm. uh, this business is kind of my phoenix from the flames. Chris is no stranger to success or failure. And a resilient entrepreneur generally strikes a chord amongst the dragons. Now, Deborah Meadham wants to find out more about his latest venture. Chris, just to so understand where the business sure. is at the moment, yeah. is it developed? Is it in use? We've completed um, effectively a pilot of the solution up in God's Country, up in the northeast, in Sunderland. Uh, what we did is we tested um, amongst um, the merchants and the consumer. So amongst the merchants, 45 businesses we interviewed and surveyed. 37% said they would contribute towards parking. OK. So you did a trial, 45 businesses, yep. and 63% said they wouldn't sign up. Why? 
good question. Probably most significant, I guess, would be the bigger nationals who have maybe a proprietary loyalty system. So whilst the local managers of those that we approached thought it was a great idea, as soon as that sort of decision went up through the chain of command, they were looking at it thinking, well, why would I reward somebody with money off their parking when we can stick some money on your loyalty card or whatever it might be? That's a really important point. It is, yeah. How do you overcome that? Well, the plan is to build momentum from the small independent shops within a particular location, get enough of those signed up, and then we believe that at a given tipping point, when enough people are spending through these platforms to earn their rewards, that the Nationals would have to take notice. OK. Chris is confident that he can generate sufficient momentum amongst the smaller stores to convince the high street big boys to get on board. And Tej Laudvani wants to find out how much headway he's made with those other key players, the car park operators. Chris, have you had conversations with car parks? Have you got any one of them committed to deploying this? Good question. Um, we had two city centres committed to it. Unfortunately, uh, we had an investment lined up which didn't quite work, and that kind of stopped things moving. So that fell through? That fell through. So today, if you were to get the investment, are those contracts still available? We would have to revisit them, I have to be honest. And how much value were those contracts worth? We estimate that each location was worth between 100 and 250,000 pounds per year. Chris, can I just unpick something? Sure, certainly. 250,000 pounds revenue to you. Yeah. So how much is the car park that you're looking at here, how much does that take in terms of revenue a year? Well, we're looking at the turnover for the, the location as a whole, not one car park. OK, so your £250,000 revenue is for an entire city and yes. location. Yes. It's not for one car park. No. Right. Deborah Meaden is left disappointed as her questioning reveals a much more modest potential return than originally thought. Will a tech-savvy Peter Jones set aside the forecasts and predict profits in this parking app? Chris, I'm going to be really quick with this because I really do like it and yet I think you're so up against it. Parking is moving towards full automation, full tracking, reg recognition. That is where this market's going. I don't believe in Britain in, in six to seven years' time there will be a car park that will not have reg registration tracking. That red recognition now is being deployed across seven regions. It's a very big contract it's taken on by two very big players without joining forces with them with regards to your app. I don't believe you've got a business. For that reason, I'm out. A major setback for Chris as the Dens technology titan dismisses his vision for the future of city centre parking. Is Deborah Meaden any more inclined to green light the Geordie entrepreneur's plans? Chris, I... I don't like it. OK. I did like it, and then I went quiet and I thought about it. Yeah. And I thought, shopping has already changed, and anybody who thinks that it's going to go back to city centres is wrong. Yep. What they are having to rethink is, what is a city centre yeah, yeah. now? I'm not sure that parking is part of that. So I think you've got an inbuilt obsolescence. We absolutely recognise that parking as a market can shrink. Parking space in city centres, from an environmental point of view, is something we're trying to sort of reduce. So part of our development roadmap is to build a sister application, which we've codenamed very cleverly Travel Perks, which basically uses the same model but rewards city centre spending with reduced public transport fares. We believe that that's potentially an even bigger um, opportunity. I completely get the pro I cannot tell you how much conversation is going up to say we actually don't want loads of cars. You know, we can't have this. The environment can't take it. And although you're thinking about that, and you're a smart guy, so I can see why you're thinking about that, it's not what you're standing here today offering me as an investment. Because of that, I can't invest. 
So I'm out. Thank you for your feedback. Further disappointment for Chris as a second dragon walks away from the deal. Will supplement supremo Tej Lalvani be prepared to swap multivitamins for multi-stories? Chris, it's a slick idea. I like it. It simplifies things, which is good. But I think the real issue is that you don't have one contract, you don't have any established data to show us it's working, and you need the capital to scale that across the country. I think if you had that, that would make sense. I think it's a bit early. Because of those reasons, it's, it's going to be challenging for me to, to make an investment today. So I'm out. Chris, you've made it very complicated. It's not complicated. Well, maybe it's complicated for me. Whether it's with the merchants, whether it's with local authorities, the motorists, you've got all these different components. In today's world, people want simplicity. And if I'm going to invest in something, it's, it's simplicity. And for that reason, I'm not going to invest and I'm out. A third and fourth dragon have shut the barriers to investment. This entrepreneur's hopes of getting his business back on the road now rests solely with cash point queen, Jenny Campbell. Chris, I don't think it's complicated at all. It's complex. Yes. But that doesn't mean to say it's complicated. Jenny thinks it's very simple, so it'd be easy for her to invest. No, I didn't say that. I said it was complex but not complicated, and I could understand it even if you couldn't. I did run a business that was complex in terms of cards in machines, gathering money into a big pot, divvying it all up. So I get it. <sighs> so why is it taking a year since your last investor dropped out? And you still haven't got it any further. It's a very good question. It's, it's you a keep real. You're saying that. Yeah, no, well, it's, um, I've had different reasons from different investors as to why they, they've, they've not wanted to invest. It's been a frustrating process. Compared to going on a date, I've been on lots of dates. And I'm Have not, you? Yeah, and I've not got married yet, so... Oh, um, my God. Go. I'm nice. not sure where to take that line of questioning. <laughs> it's thrown me completely now. Um, right. And you haven't been able to find that money through friends or family since then? Well, I'm from a council estate in the North East. Not many of my friends have got 80 kids. This is a hard one to climb, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But I like it. So I'm using. Do you own the business 100%? I own 91%. You've learned how to make money and learned how to lose it and you've brought an idea that might have legs, might have legs. So let's see if we can make this work then. I will offer you all of the money for 45 and a half percent of your business, i.e. equal partners with you. Do you want to go and talk to the wall? <laughs> the £80,000 Chris's business so desperately needs is within touching distance. But the price demanded by Jenny Campbell is high, almost half of his company. Time to seek the advice of someone. That's what I think. Or more accurately, something. Yeah. That seen and heard it all before. Uh, the wall's an idiot, by the way. He said no. But I said yes. We're on a date. OK, that's great. Well done. A monopoly on success for Chris, Mwah. whose free parking app has now passed go. Really appreciate it. Well done. Thank you. 
and collected £80,000. He leaves the den with the backing of a dragon who appears the perfect match for both him and his business. Well, I didn't get dressed up for nothing. Delighted to get the investment. Took I didn't quite get it, but Jenny certainly did. And I think she'll bring a lot of value and a lot of experience that I'm, I'm kind of looking for. Jenny, I'm so happy I'm going to get free parking for the rest of my life. That's going to be a, a tough right. one. Anyway, I hope he doesn't think we're going on a date in a car park. Oh, that took a turn I wasn't expecting. <laughs> 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 Next into the den, Will Hodson and Henry Dezout. Give me a bit of space on the mark as well, mate, because I'm so I tend to brush up against you when I'm doing the pitch. Close friends since university who'd always planned to be business partners. We've kind of been prepping for it for years in a way. What you would say to such important people who could make such a big difference to your business. Entering the den with what they feel could be a game changer for every household in Britain. We're hugely passionate about this, and we see it as one of the big issues of our time. Hi, my name is Henry. And I'm Will. We're co-founders of Look After My Bills. Our service minimizes the price you pay for gas and electricity. Because right now, people get ripped off. We all know that we should switch, but we don't. So, Look After My Bills does the switching for you. You sign up on our website in just a couple of minutes. Our algorithms get to work, and then we move you to the best deal every year automatically. You don't have to lift a finger. That's the key difference between us and comparison sites. With energy alone, we're taking on and disrupting a market worth billions. And we're offering 1% of our business for £90,000. Thanks for listening. We'd love to take any questions. A confident pitch from Will Hodson and Henry Dezout, asking for £90,000 for a tiny 1% of a website that automatically finds the best deal for your gas and electricity. But the multi-million pound price tag appears to have ruffled Tage Lalvani's feathers. Hi, guys. Will, <coughs> Henry. Hi. Wondering where to start, whether I should start with the evaluation. How do you get to that figure, and why do you think your business is, is worth £9 million? It's a combination of our track record and experience in this space, but also the size of the market in front of us. So right now, people spend £29 billion on energy in Britain alone. There are 20... That, that doesn't excite me too much. A lot of the time, people come into the den, they quote market sizes and say, well, because of that. But let's start with, with more basics. How many customers do you have? Because evaluation like that, I presume you'd have a lot of customers on board. Be around 60 to 70,000 who have done the switch. People who have signed up for the opportunity to take our deals, it's a larger number, around 250, 300,000. In terms of before you set up the business four years ago, what did you both do? I've got a political background, actually, so I started off doing policy in think tanks. I then was a special advisor in government. Slightly different approach to, to Henry. I actually did some work for the Green Party, and I decided that I wanted to do what I could about big business not giving the best treatment it could to normal people and consumers. Will and I have been old friends since university. I left government in 2014. We'd been talking, you know, as best mates for years about doing something together. So we started the big deal. What the business did to start off was one-off switches. So we save people huge money with great deals, but then the deals expired and they go up to a higher price. Now customers asked us to start switching for them, and that's where Look After My Bills comes in. The entrepreneurs put up a robust defense of their valuation, citing a growing business born out of consumer demand. But Deborah Meadon's worried the new laws protecting personal data could short-circuit their chances of success. Will, Henry, do you see any 
changes in the legislation that's going to stop you from simply being able to take decisions on your consumer's behalf? No, the direction of travel in this space is all towards a service like Look After My Bills. I'm sure you will realise that the energy market just doesn't work for customers because they don't keep engaging with the market. And people, of course, don't switch because it's a complete pain in the neck. And if yeah. you do it once, you're certainly not going to get around to doing it every year. Thank you. How many competitors have you got in this field? The big players would be the large comparison websites. They do normal switching, manual switching. In terms of automatic switching, this really is an early green industry. No one has established themselves as a central player, which is our aim. There's been zero innovation in this market for 20 years. Price comparison websites look like they did 20 years ago, big list, that's it, and still 60, 70% of people do not switch. There has to be some new innovation to change this, and we think we're the ones that can do that. A groundbreaking website that's also first to market. It looks like the entrepreneurs have all the elements for success. But Jenny Campbell wonders if they're at the mercy of the big players not joining their utility revolution. Energy companies, whatever big one is choosing not to be on your platform, because frankly, it costs them money to, I would call it, slit your own throat, <laughs> yeah? There's a race to the bottom. We try to get people the best price we can find from suppliers they can trust. Now, if a supplier doesn't want to engage with a service that gets customers a great deal year on year, I'm not sure that's the kind of company that we want to be moving people to. Are you not compromised on independence? Because surely whoever pays you the most, you know, deal done, isn't it? I think ultimately all we can do is be totally transparent mm -hmm. and honest with our users. They know there might be cheaper deals out there, perhaps from companies that we wouldn't necessarily recommend. A rare occurrence in the den. As the entrepreneurs reveal, cash won't always be king on their switching site. Tej Lalvani has quietly taken a reading of the numbers and is ready to supply his verdict on the proposition. You guys want smart money, right? And there's a cost to having the value in the den, what we're going to bring. I think what you need to do is to grow your brand and to build it, create the awareness, and that's what I can do. And at the same time, you'll need to raise money in the future, and I can help with that too. Right, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to give you an offer. The offer is all of the money, but at 7%. Thank you. Thank you for the offer. Tej Lalvani provides an early boost for the entrepreneurs, but the deal he wants is 6% more than the 1% on offer. Does Peter Jones feel the entrepreneurs have what it takes to look after an investment? I think you've done incredibly well I really like the idea. I think you've got a real chance of making this a success. So I'm going to make you an offer. And I'm making this offer because I bring so much more value than Tej. I don't need um, that. So I don't need to, to, to compete with that. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but in return, I'd like 10% of the business. Technology guru Peter Jones electrifies the den, using his track record to go in higher than his fellow dragon, demanding a whopping 10% of the company. But does Tuka Suleiman feel he can come up with a better deal? Impressive. You're impressive. And. I believe my offer can add great value to you. So I will give you all of the money for 8%. I love this business for many reasons. I think anything that disrupts the blinking energy industry has got to be good news. And I'd really love to be involved. And when I really want to be involved in something, I get quite competitive. <laughs> so, I am going to make you an offer. 
I'm going to offer you all of the money. But I want 3% of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Deborah Meaden dramatically undercuts her rivals, encouraging the entrepreneurs to switch to her deal of £90,000 for just 3%. Jenny Campbell can also be quite competitive. Is she about to turn up the heat in the den? The thing that I really, really like is the ethical piece that comes through this. What you're launching today is about making energy companies honest at the end of the day, and it's, it's long overdue. So what is there not to like? I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball in and say that I would offer you one-fifth of the money for 1%. Which means you need to get the rest of us to agree. Mm. Do you want to go and talk at the back, guys? Yeah, well, let's... <laughs> a full house. Peter Jones offers all the money for a hefty 10%. Tuka Suleiman wants 8%. Tej Lalvani's after 7 We can't go any further. We just can't do it. Jenny Campbell wants 5% shared equally, but Deborah Meaden has been the most competitive, asking for just 3% of the company. Having discussed it, um, Henry and I are incredibly flattered. flattered. We're willing to double the amount of uh, equity we're giving away in our business, from 1% to 2%. But we'd need slightly more money We'd need to ask for 150k uh, for that 2%. Look, guys, I think you have to understand the real value here. At 2%, you're going to struggle. You need to be a bit more realistic. Guys, can I just say that I, I, um, I do understand the predicament. I like it even more. So just on that, I'll halve my offer. So I will offer you all of the money. 90,000 for 5%, not 10%. Okay, one to that the next one. This, I'm afraid, has to be our, our final offer, and we're really, really keen to make it work. £120,000 for 2% of the business. I didn't get out of bed for 2%, that's for sure. I understand. So, on that basis, um, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman stays in bed refusing to give in to the entrepreneur's equity demands. But is 2% enough to tempt the other dragons from under the covers? I actually think it's a great shame because this could make a lot of difference to you. We don't want to give up uh, on you. Please, please believe that this is as far as we can go. Sorry, guys. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm out. Guys, I feel that you've taken the negotiation way too far, and that shows to me there's a naivety in business that really concerns me. And I think you will walk away from here now having completely missed a massive opportunity. And you're about to make one of the biggest mistakes of your life. Is that your final offer, 2%? That's our final offer. On the basis of that's your final offer, I'm out. <sighs> They've had five offers but now just two dragons remain. Are Jenny Campbell and Tej Lalvani willing to negotiate? Okay, guys, here's where I'm at. 
you ask for 120,000 for 2%. But I urge you to reconsider and see the value that the dragons are going to bring. We do. I'll do 120,000, but for 3%, and that's my final offer. It was, we're hoping to bring Jenny out. We'd, we'd uh, both, OK. Both is what we would like. I would share with Tej at 3%, so we're apart by 1%. You could walk away on the basis of 1%. Half a percent each. There is no way that you two would do, well, the 120 for 2% as we, as we described. Well, we gave you our final offer. Jenny and Tej, we have a deal. Right. Yes. Let's do it. Go. Go. Finally. Okay. Oh, great. Finally. Stop looking Hard so negotiations. Worried. Well done. Thank That's you so very much. They almost lost it, but having given away just three percent of the company, Will and Henry leave with hundred and twenty thousand pounds and two switched-on dragons. <laughs> it's a great, unique business. Hard work, but we got there in the end. Yeah. yeah. That was hardcore. I feel like my internal organs have <laughs> been in a vice. I just love the way it brings the energy companies to account. Just getting one dragon would have been amazing. Getting two, it's double the double whammy. Well done, guys. It will make a huge difference. Next into the den, two entrepreneurs wary of one particular dragon. We are worried about Peter because he's really scary. I hope he doesn't go for the kill. But to survive in the den, they'll also have to face the fire of four other dragons. Hello, dragons. My name is Michal Takac. And I'm Tim Inskip. And we are from Karen, UK. Uh, we're asking for an investment of £50,000 for 15% of our business. We have the UK rights to the Caron portfolio products, which are all made from cannabis sativa plant extract. Mikhail, would you like to explain your story? I am from the Czech Republic and I was working in the UK when an industrial accident changed my life. I damaged my arm and I lost several fingers on my hand. Amazing energy surgeons transferred the toe from my foot to my hand. During that times, the pain was unbearable and the scarring was extensive. Visiting Frank from the Czech Republic brought me the Caron hemp ointment and another hemp products. I started using them and the results were incredible. So I like to share this experience with others. And I approached Caron Czech Republic and brought these products to UK. So we have uh, 18 different products ranging from face cream, uh, shower gel, hemp leaf tea and hemp seeds. And they're all made from cannabis sativa, commonly known as hemp. We are vegan, organic, and totally legal, as the products contain none of the psychoactive elements found in, in cannabis, but they're very high in the other elements known as cannabinoids, which are currently proven to be beneficial in treating many different uh, uh, complaints. We're passionate about uh, cannabis sativa, but we are um, plainly retail amateurs, okay. and we need the help of a dragon to guide us, to manage our growth, and uh, fulfill our full potential. Thank you very much for your attention, and we have some samples which you would like to show. Would it be possible that we have the samples <coughs> at the end? Because I'm slightly worried if I have to take any of the samples, I might make a wrong investment decision. They have no psychotropical <laughs> effect whatsoever. Yeah. Now they've reassured the dragons the products aren't mind-altering, Tim Inskip and Mikhail Takarch can get on with the business of handing them out. Thank you. There we go, there's a selection of stuff in there. They're looking for £50,000 for 15% of their business selling cosmetics made with a cannabis extract. But Peter Jones is still confused about the legalities of the operation. How can you convince me that this isn't a potential front for a, a big drugs ring? 
We have the, we have EU certification. All EU certification. All the farmers are certified. There is very strict uh, law oversee uh, these farmers. What's stopping the company in Czech Republic the temptation to realise that they make a small amount of money on this, but the real business behind the scenes is cannabis? They grow in a different plant entirely, and it's, it is illegal to grow different plants. What would make it restricted is the level of THC, which is the psychoactive component of the hemp plant, which it doesn't have. So essentially it's legal, it's not a restricted substance. OK, so I'm not going to be an investor in some sort of illegal drugs? No, ring. absolutely not, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and you've given three different creams here. The one's a balm. As, as well as balm. Yeah. yeah, and then these are is an ointment. Yep. Is it all the same product? Si no. OK. Is this a cosmetic or is it a medicine? At the moment, we market it as the cosmetics. We don't make reclaims, it, it helps people, and we sell it as a cosmetic. But isn't that a major problem? Because A, you can't tell anyone what the product does. You just said it's an all-purpose hemp ointment. I don't know if it's to moisturize and make my skin glow. I don't know if it's to reduce pain for, um, you know, joint pain or injury that I've got. This does have um, medical device certification in the EU, in Czech Republic. They have run the trials. We are talking specifically about this product to get a medical device in the UK. The point is that the evidence is that it does help in a very, very wide range of different complaints, problems. But we cannot say that we are going to cure any of this. But, but I know you definitely can't say that you don't have a medicine's license to say that. But what I'm saying is that you don't know what the product's for. Trouble for the entrepreneurs, as their inability to claim their products have health benefits, gets under the skin of Tej Lalvani. Now Peter Jones wants to establish the basis of the duo's relationship with the manufacturer. Who owns the company Karen? Uh, my friends in the Czech Republic. Your friends? Yes. How I... much of the company do you own? Uh, none. None? The Czech Republic, nothing. No. Nothing? No. Basically, our relationship is that Mikhail developed some of the products in the Czech Republic, brought them over to the UK. Uh, and tell me, what's your deal with this company? They are my close friends. So you've got to buy from them? Yes. yes. Is there a minimum quantity you have to buy? No. And your licence with them is last for how long? Uh, to 2023 at the moment. And can they terminate your contract at any time? No. no. C can I look at that agreement? Yes, yes. While Deborah Meaden gets to grips with the paperwork on that Czech distribution deal, Jenny Campbell has some questions on the UK side of the setup. Tim, what's your role in this business? Are you a, are you an equal shareholder? Uh, no, I'm a minor shareholder at the moment. Uh, so the shareholders split how? I only have ten percent. Yeah. I got a, I got a 60, so ninety and ten. I got a sixty percent of the company, and we got a, another of minor shareholders which helped me on the beginning uh, with the start of the company. And how much have they put in to help you from the beginning? There was no more than twenty thousand altogether. I invest my own uh, over nearly two hundred thousand in in the business. Two hundred thousand pounds. Wow. And what for you, where has that been spent? Uh, unwisely. I did a lot of mistakes on the beginning. I hired, uh, I rented a warehouse, uh, 10,500 square feet. How much? Big. Offices and uh, hired people because I, I did believe, because I was watching the Dragons, then I, I want to do big. Oh, it's our fault then? No, no, no <laughs> Peter's. No, no, no joke. Oh, it's Peter's fault, specifically. <laughs> no, I was normally, watching it for a series. When, normally, people so, do that without And I said, I want to go minute, big. Hang on a minute, this is my, 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 my time, uh, thank you. So I, it's Peter's at fault no, here. It's not, so he's not I your favourite dragon. Was, That's no, good yes, to hear. No. Um, so you made some mistakes in the beginning. Absolutely. So how much would you write off of the 200,000 as a mistake? Uh, 100,000 for sure. The admission of a big cash spend with not much to show for it hasn't gone down well with former banker Jenny Campbell. And it looks like Deborah Meadens now up to speed with that deal with the entrepreneur's parent company in the Czech Republic. Right now, you have absolutely no negotiating tools in here whatsoever. On June the 3rd, 2023, if you've done a cracking job, you hand this business back to these guys. There is nothing in here that gives you an automatic right of renewal. From my point of view, they will be only against themselves, how they can do it without us after years. Well, because you've built their brand, they've got a really, really valuable asset over here, why on earth would they renew? Mm -hmm. Job done. Market penetrated. Mm -hmm. I'm not spending my time building somebody else's brand for them. 
they won't be investing. I'm out. A lack of control over the future of the business has spooked Deborah Meaden. And it's left Tuka Suleiman wondering how an investor would get their money back. My question mark here is the fact that you don't own the brand, it's a distribution, and there could be no exit. Uh, yes, well, we believe at the moment the exit is to sell back to Karen Check. Have you got agreement to that? We are negotiating that agreement. Well, you haven't got the agreement? No. no. I'm not doubting the product. Amazing product, as you say, but you don't own the brand. Once you've created the brand, the retailers want the brand. They don't care about you. I do wish you all the best, because you're going to make your friend rich. I'm out. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman joined Deborah Meaden in exiting over that controversial distribution contract. And Tej Lalvani has some words of wisdom on the pair's plans to back up the potential benefits of the product. A products like this, the most important thing is to show the effectiveness that it works. You'll need to do clinical trials in pretty much every region or territory that you launch in because they all have different licensing agencies. And the cost of doing a clinical trial, do you know how much that costs in the UK to do a clinical trial like this? Uh, about 120,000. Exactly. And to get the license will cost you a hell of a lot more. You're going to have to raise half a million pounds. I'm out. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. Mikhail, Tim, I'm concerned about the way that you've gone about setting this business up. Mikhail, particularly you, where you've... Having friendships in, in your home country is fantastic. Um, but what you should have done was, if you had such a huge amount of money, £200,000 to invest, you should have found a way to invest in the holding company in the Czech Republic. I could have been potentially interested, actually, in something like this. But ultimately, you've brought a distribution agency-style deal that I think isn't good enough. So, I'm out. OK, thank you. Peter Jones's departure leaves Jenny Campbell as the last dragon standing. Is she able to see the potential for profit in a business her fellow millionaires have shunned? So, I mean, this is a bit of a mess, isn't it? it, it from where we're standing, I'm sure you can see that. You, you come into the den with a, um, an exclusivity agreement that you're halfway through and all sorts of issues on extending or minimum purchase levels. How confident are you that you can renegotiate that exclusivity agreement, 100% confident. 100% yes. confident. OK, so I think this is complex. But I can see the belief in your eyes, Mikel, and certainly you've come on board, Tim, with the same belief. But I will make you an offer. So I will offer you all of the money. But because of the risk factors, multiple risk factors in this deal, I would want 25% of your business. OK, thank you very much for the offer. Uh, can we uh, have a little discussion? Please go and talk to the wall. An 11th hour change of fortune as Jenny Campbell backs her gut instinct with an offer. But at 10% more than the entrepreneurs were offering, they have a tricky decision on their hands. Uh, thank you very much for your offer. We are allowed to accept your offer. Thank you very much. Well done. Yeah, well done. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Look forward to thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck, guys. The cosmetic duo have given up a quarter of the company, but leave the den with a £50,000 investment. I thought we lost it. I did say you shouldn't use their product before <laughs> making an offer. We can't wait till we have our first yes. meeting. Yeah, we'd like to meet Jenny as soon as possible <laughs> to share our excitement and uh, our visions.
and maybe yeah. having a bottle of champagne. Yeah. <laughs>
a bad start for Mark and Liam as den stalwart Peter Jones, deterred by the lack of a Didsbury distillery, makes an early exit. Will Jenny Campbell get their bid for investment back on track? OK, good news for you. I love gin. We can tell with your tables here. <laughs> <laughs> your bottle stop. Um, I've got about 36 gins on my gin bar at home. And at some point, I will invest in a gin business. The question is, will it be today and will it be you? Mm. Mm. It is a hugely crowded market space. You absolutely have to create something special. So excite me on what you think you're going to do now you're in this full time. Yeah. This coming 12 months. So this, Come on. This coming 12 months, you know, with, with what we've done um, in the first month of going full time, we're extremely confident we'll do 10,000 units. That equates to £275,000 turnover. And then what? After that, we're very, very confident that we will do 100,000 units. We base that on a similar gym brand with a similar backstory. And how long does it take them to get to 100,000 uh, bottles Just shy of three years, and that's based on getting a couple of good UK retailers behind them. They've not even dipped their toe in the water with the export market. The export market at a minute is huge. Okay. A competing brand has provided Mark and Liam with a potential route map to success. But will the achievements of others convince the dragons that the time is right for this particular gin? Do you know, for this, this, is a, this is a really hard one because it's just, it's like flipping a coin. Because honestly, you know, you look at some of the brands and, it, and it's just like, so why did that one land and that one has disappeared off the face of the yeah, earth? Yeah. But <sighs> here's my concern for you. You're on the tail end of the comet and therefore shouldn't take reassurances from other businesses yeah, that yeah. have taken what appears to be a similar journey, but they actually got in three years ago. Yeah. And I think that this is in a marketplace that is going to slow right down and settle out. You haven't got me over the line on this one. I won't be investing. I'm out. Mark and Liam have lost their second dragon as Deborah Meaden decides they're simply too late to the craft gin party. Does Tuka Suleiman believe that the duo can carve out a niche in an already crowded market? I like the pair of you. Thank you. I think you've got the enthusiasm and you want to learn. That, that's a big tick. And, and I see this as an opportunity. However, my only concern is how long will it take? Is it a three, four year journey? And within that three or four years, will the market have the perfect storm? With lots of brands not surviving? So I'm torn. I'm gonna wish you well in your way but this is one that I'm going to let go. I'm not going to invest. Good luck, but I'm out. Three dragons down, and Mark and Liam's pitch is in danger of going completely flat. He was a fan of the flavour, but is Tej Lalvani prepared to offer this fledgling gin business a much-needed financial tonic? I think what you've done is great in the last year, getting your product in retail, creating the blend from just very little funds. I really think if you're using the Didsbury name, it's important to have it manufactured there. We're not naive. We know that gives the product and the brand the credence that consumers are going to move towards. Um, you know, it'd be foolish of us to have sunk all our cash into a distillery when yep. we started the business, it would have just been a bad business decision. However, long term, as the business grows, we know we can bring the cost of production down by doing it ourselves and generate a better brand experience. So we know we need to be there. I think you're very likeable, Thank you, you know, and uh, you come across really well. But I'm going to think about it a little bit and sip some more gin. <laughs> OK, 
cool man up there is going <laughs> to stay cool, so um, I'll go because Northern girls get things done. You're very smart. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying you're not, but he hasn't <laughs> given you very much chance hasn't to say anything. Hasn't given much time again, has he? I did say punch me if I talk <laughs> too much. Um, I went to school in Disbury. Yeah. And I do like your product. Thank you. Thank you. But it needs some work. Um, it needs better branding, it needs better profile, it needs a better story, that whole thing. So, yes, I will make you an offer. Um, but if I'm going to be part of this journey, I want to be an equal part. And so my offer to you is all of the money for 33 and a third percent. Okay, okay, thanks for your offer. Yeah. An offer from a gin loving Jenny Campbell, albeit in return for significantly more equity than the 10% the pair originally offered. Is Tej Lalvani prepared to match or even better it? I'm quite torn, you know, I'd like to be part of it. But the thing that keeps coming back in my head is, is the competition. <laughs> Yes, there have been some good success stories in the industry, but there's a lot of failures before that. Come on, Tish, you want them to go on their knees to get a bid from you? In or out? All right, guys, I'm going to give you an offer. Let's go for it. I'm just going to offer the, all of the money for, again, a third ownership. From naught to identical offers of £75,000 in a matter of minutes. A surprising turnaround for Mark and Liam, who now find themselves faced with a difficult decision. Before we go into the goes, thanks for your offers, by the way, as well, and having the belief in the product. We really appreciate that. Um, obviously, you both bring huge value to anything you do. Just, just talk us through what your vision would be, if you don't mind, of, of, of getting, you know, getting involved. What, where are we taking this? What are we doing? Well, I'll go <laughs> first because uh, it'll take forever. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the first thing I will say is that I don't have a multi-million pound business to run. OK? okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'm building up a small portfolio of select businesses yeah. So it's more about my energy and focus yeah. and passion for the product and creating the story and the brand with you. Brilliant, yeah. And Tate? Well, I think having too much time on your hands is not a great selling point, personally. <laughs> but, um, uh, but I really believe that having your own distillery is important in Didsbury to create that full story. And that's what's going to be able to sell you in the UK and more so internationally. OK, so you, you um, want to go on the back and figure is this it? the yeah. point where we go to that? Yeah, you're going to talk to the wall, the wise wall, under the light. Um. It's the moment of truth for Mark and Liam. Two dragons with matching offers, a hefty third of the business in exchange for £75,000. You know, we know we both have very different expertise. So, that's it, yeah. And then we'll is... toss a coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Choose wisely now, and the future of their company could be assured. We've always gone and got. Yeah. Let's go and got. OK, so we, we've spoke to the wall and we, we've Made done a decision. lot of our decision-making on gut and instinct since on the journey. <laughs> Um, so, um, we'd like to accept your offer, Jenny, if that's OK. Whoa! Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> well done. Can we hold? Can we hold? Oh, we're hugging. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Success for Mark and Liam, who leave the den with £75,000 and an investor who shares their passion for the product. I am the gin queen. <laughs> I always was. Is this where we do the only feels and horses moment? <laughs> Just jump up and down. <laughs> oh, I thought it was all over now. <laughs> Jenny, I'm pleased for you you've got this deal. You need to make it sound genuine. It's not even your drink. You drink whiskey. I'm feeling supersonic. Give me gin and tonic. Come on, mate, we've earned this.
I'm a really young entrepreneur. The den started when I was 10. I never imagined I'd be here, but look at this. <laughs> and Edward Hollands has had a business brainwave that he's determined to make a success of. I've got a vision. I want to make my mark on the world. Good morning, Dragons. I'm Edward Hollands, the young entrepreneur behind Driven Media, a business that takes us at an overlooked space that's been staring you, you in your face and your way here today. Uh, I would have brought one of our adverts along today, but I doubt it would fit into the lift, let alone be allowed into the den. <laughs> I'm looking to give you a 10% equity stake in return for a £30,000 investment. Driven Media turns commercial trucks travelling across the country into mobile billboards. I want to run through a few reasons why truck advertising is a great media space. Firstly, while you're driving or being driven around, you're incredibly receptive to advertising. Secondly, each trailer is seen on average by 55,000 people on a daily basis. This puts our average cost per thousand at 75p, making truck advertising the most cost-effective advertising platform in the UK today. I'm going to give you a model with how you might look on our billboards. <laughs> Thank you. An enthusiastic pitch from Derby-based Edward Hollands. Thank you. He's seeking a £30,000 fuel injection from a dragon... Thank you. ..in return for a 10% stake in his mobile billboard business. There we go. Oh, well. But Peter Jones is wondering if this is already a road well-travelled. Edward, it's not a new idea, a new concept. Trucks have been putting this type of fascias on their trailers for many years. Yeah. What's different about your business and your idea? In recent years, with technology, you've been able to put GPS trackers on the trailers. All of our hauliers have a contract where they've got to do a minimum of five hours a day driving time, five days a week. Um, and it's using these GPS trackers that we can monitor them to make sure they're not stuck in their yard for three months. OK, and have you set the business up? Yes, it's been trading for 20 months. You've been trading for 20 months? Wow. And you've been doing this while still at school? Um, I've, I've graduated from the University of Derby <laughs> uh, three months before I set this up. You've, you've graduated? I'm 22. You're not 22. <laughs> Are you? I am, yes. I've got my passport if you need to see. <laughs> You're 22? Wow, you lucky devil. OK, you've been going 20 months. Yeah. Um, and how many trucks have you signed up? Four trucks. But we've got over a thousand trailers we can access uh, within 24 hours. Okay, what have you turned over in the last 12 months? 18,000 pounds. And out of that 18,000, what's the profit? How do you how do you make money? So an advertiser would buy a package for one lorry for a 12 month period for 7,800 pounds plus VAT, and then it costs me about five and a half thousand pounds for production, and whatever's left over is the profit for the business. So you make 2,000 pounds for every contract you sign. Yeah. Really good. Okay. The baby-faced entrepreneur reveals a sophisticated business model with the potential for some very grown-up returns. But textiles expert Tuka Suleiman has some concerns about the costs involved. Edward, your £7,800 for a, a big haul is, is quite expensive. Um, a Luton van is less than a trailer. What's it for a Luton van? It'd be £5,000 plus fat. So expensive. Is that because of the cost of the printing? Yeah, exactly. So what does that cost you? Let's say for a Luton van. Uh, it would cost me about £1,500 for fully wrapped. OK, if you focus on that, you could probably reduce the cost dramatically. I print fabric in Turkey. They charge me $2 a metre, right? Yeah. On what material is it printed on? Weather-resistant vinyl. So if you source the raw material, you go to a printer who's got a printer of that size... You just say, print it. Yeah. I, I like that idea. You, you like the idea? Yeah. Good, good. The entrepreneur gets some cost-cutting advice from textile supremo Tuka Suleiman. But Jenny Campbell is wondering why the brakes still appear to be on when it comes to the take-up of the advertising. Edward. You talked about having a 1,000 trailers within 24 hours. Yeah. 
but you've only been trading on four lorries. Yes. Now, what's missing? What's getting in the way of you finding the adverts to put on the thousand lorries you can source tomorrow? It's the lack of awareness. Uh, when With I... the advertisers? Yes, exactly. What adverts would you see are the ones that you'd really like to go for? Um, so insurance, where there's no, not a physical product, so especially car insurance, because uh -huh. you'll they're going to be right in front of their potential audience. OK, have you ever got in front of an insurance company? I have, yes. And? Um, Who was it? Uh, Be Wiser and Car Finance 24-7. OK, and what do they say? Uh, so Car Finance are considering it for next year. And Be Wiser have said it come back to me in September because we, we're, we're very open to this idea. OK, I like that. And you'll always find with finance companies, insurance companies, all those in that industry from which I come from, that they're in budget cycles. OK, so there's a timing thing going on here with that industry. Interest from a lucrative market that she knows inside out has got Jenny Campbell's wheels turning. Deborah Meaden now wants to find out if anyone else is helping to drive Edward's company forward. So who's in the business at the moment? Is it, is it you? Uh, there is just me at the minute. Yeah. But we've got two investors about a similar age to myself who are investing £5,000 each for a 10% stake each. OK, but other than that, it's you? Just me. OK. Going forward, as the business grows, can you just talk about your projections? So this year, we're aiming to turn over a quarter of a million pounds. OK, so your turnover, you're expecting 250,000. Gross profit would be... 120,000, that way. OK. So what does the net profit look like in year one? Uh, of the 2000 of the 250000 uh, uh, i'm just trying to get that yeah. row of numbers that starts with 250000 at the top goes to 120000 gross profit net profit sorry uh, 80000 pounds when you're in business you don't need to know a lot of numbers but you do need to know the three numbers that are really going to make your business tick. Yeah. You need to know your turnover, your margins, your net profit. That's what you need to know. Edward's inability to give Deborah Meaden some basic business figures is threatening to stall his pitch. And now Peter Jones wants to take issue with the valuation he's placed on his company. Edward. Um... You are asking for 30,000 for 10%. Yeah. So you're valuing your business at 300,000. And yet, you're valuing the company to your friends at 50,000, because you've just said they invest 5,000 and they get 10% of the company. Is that just because you think I've got more money than them? Uh, no, it was because of their, their experience. They've actually come through your program. Have they? Yes, both of them. So they're from the Peter Jones Enterprise Academy? Yes. OK, well, then I understand why they are worth a lot more than any dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but whilst it's lovely to hear that, and I think that's really great, why would you value your business with me at 300,000 and 50,000 to them? I thought they'd be able to contribute to the business for a, a, lot, a lot longer, you know, because obviously they're at my age, so they're going to be working you know, <laughs> 50, 60 years, the worst case, <laughs> towards the eventual goal. Are you suggesting it's because I'm old that you <laughs> don't want to give me too much of your company? Uh, no, I think it was at the stage of the business. Do you know when you have that term where you sort of, like dig a hole? Yeah, I've got to stop <laughs> digging. Are yeah. you feeling that at the moment? <laughs> yeah. I've got to stop. Edward, I think you're very investable. I think you are confident, you listen to advice. As a business in terms of size, I think it's very small. I think you need to build it, prove it a bit more, the model, and make it work. But unfortunately, the business for me today, um, I won't be investing. But all the best, I'm out. Tej Lalvani decides not to climb aboard the lorry billboard business. Has Peter Jones heard anything to encourage him to reunite with his Academy alumni and invest in the young entrepreneur. I like this concept. I think that this is a concept for the future. 
I think if you'd got really on top of your numbers and come in here with a really concise plan, it could have gone really well for you. But it's too early stage at the moment for me to, to take you on that journey and invest in you. So I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish you every best of luck, because I think you are an entrepreneur in waiting and you're going to make it happen. Thank you. Edward, my job, I feel, as an investor, is to take this seed of this idea and to really make that business work. Not to become a mentor, a daily mentor, running a business. And I think you're still in that phase. So I'm really sorry, Edward, but I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden is unconvinced and steers clear of the advertising offering. Tuka Suleiman has already dished out some business advice. Will he now go one step further and dish out some dosh? Edward, where do you live? I live in Derby. Derby? Ah. That's north. I know where it is. I am excited for you, and I think you will succeed. But you need intense mentoring. And it's a disappointment you live in Derby, because I would have liked you in my office every day working with us, you know? I would have liked to be your mentor, but it's not going to be possible today. I'm not going to invest it and I'm out. Tuka Suleiman keeps his pounds in his pocket and becomes the fourth dragon to walk away from a deal. Jenny Campbell is the youthful entrepreneur's last chance of investment. Will she take his business to the next level or send him away with nothing? Edward, how are you feeling? Uh, still a bit nervous. Presumably you're nervous about walking out without an investment because that's what you came for today. Yeah. So look, this is where I am. I sold my business last year, um, having built it from a, a very poorly business to a very successful business. And I had a fleet of 4,000 ATMs in the UK and 1,000 in Europe. Um, they're metal boxes. I know how to wrap metal boxes. <laughs> You are highly investable. I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money. But for my investment in you, I would want 20% of your business. I'd be very happy with that. Oh, that was a quick response. <laughs> I need to teach you some of that stuff. But anyway, for now. Well, I was say, well, <laughs> in one of the quickest deliberations ever seen in the den, the entrepreneur accepts Jenny Campbell's terms. Thank you all. Congratulations. And drives off into a lucrative future with a dragon on board. And I love the fact that you live in Derby. I'm a, I'm a northern girl. Thank you very much. 20% <laughs> is absolutely perfect. So that's how I went, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking that now before you take it away. <laughs> I love the fact that he accepted your offer before you finished. <laughs> Bless him. He knows a good offer when he sees one. I think me and Jenny could be the northern powerhouse. The potential's there. I'm just really excited and I can't wait to get, to get going. Next to try and brew up a deal was Matthew DC from back in Series 15. Fred in this. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Why? Yeah. National humiliation, I suppose. Aww. Matthew hoped that practice patter backed up with tasty coffee from his unique on-the-go gadget would take him from pitch to rich in an instant. I've brought him back to relive his time in the den. Are you ready to go through it again? <laughs> no, but I'm here now, aren't yeah, I? So, tough. Yeah, tough. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dragons, I'm Matthew. I'm the inventor of the umph the fastest in-cup coffee brewer in the world. Not only is the ump fast, but it also produces a better cup of coffee. Now, if I haven't said this any faster than the other 100 times I've said it in the mirror, then your coffee should be ready to try, and I'd be happy to take any questions you may have on the ump or the business itself. Thanks for listening. A smooth pitch from Matthew Deasy, who wants £40,000 for 5% of his portable coffee maker company. First to question the entrepreneur is fellow coffee connoisseur Tej Lalvani, who thinks Matthew may have missed a trick in his demo. 
Right, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coffee lover. In fact, we've got coffee plantations in India. We make our own, grow our own coffee out there. So uh, it's an interesting product. But what you should have done, really, coming in here, is got us a sample from a standard cafetiere and shown your product compared to that. So we can see really the difference in the high pressure, what it causes. I mean, so, I've, got, I've got reviews from like World Brister Championship judges and things like that. that yeah, but I mean, but this is, this is our opinion. Can you tell me, um, your main USP, you said that it does the pressurization better than other products and it is portable and you can take it with you. Is that? Yeah. It's the only one that you can rebrew. So you can rebrew and put it into a cup? Yeah. So there's no other product that can rebrew at the moment? No, nothing. There's nothing that does that. Tej Lalvani has clarified the unique design that sets Matthew's product apart. Now, Jenny Campbell wants to know whether he has the sales to back up his financial projections. Tell me what your forecast is, your one numbers, because you very boldly said that you would double that investment okay. within year one. So this year, we're looking at getting uh, to 1.1 million in terms of sales. So, uh, units? No, for pounds. 1.1 million. Yeah. So how many units? Um, I haven't done the actual figures on the actual units. That I would, because it's a mix, it's a blend. Oh. So, so if I explain this month, so far this month we've done £20,000 at £11,000 GP. But you still know how many units you've sold. You still, you still know how many physically of these have gone out. Physically of those, I know total, yeah, the 4,400 4, units have gone out in total to date. Yeah, sorry, let me just take you back, because I was trying to get to year one numbers, and, and then you tried to explain that so by you, you, last, year one last month. month. You did £20,000 worth of sales last month. Yeah. So how many units was that? 20, this month, this month current now. So, of course, half of the way through the month, that's, that's what we're up to. Um, so, units-wise, that's a mixture between distributors yeah. and selling direct online. So well, I know it's a mixture as to where they've all gone, but it's still a certain number of units, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter where they've landed. I know the splits financially, but I don't know the splits in terms of units. Matthew, that's frustrating. So if you say, is it 80% distribution? I can, if you, can, I, can I break it down? Well, so how much? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a mathematical modeling. I've done 1,500. I've done it on what I I've, I've run the business. I've drilled it down in terms of an Excel spreadsheet and I've put in Matthew, terms you of... Matthew, answer the question, please. What, sorry, what's Is it 80% of your business distribution in your model? No, I would say it's less than that. I would say it's around 60%, 60 to 70%, I would say. Matthew, I have to say, this, is, this just isn't good enough, actually. Which bit? All of it. Fumbling the financials never goes down well with the dragons. And Tuka Suleiman is getting equally riled about the drink he's been served. Matthew, you say it's the best coffee, right? Yeah. It is terrible. Look at it. Taste it. You tell me if that's good coffee. It's under-extracted. It's not a fair test, really. The water isn't at the right temperature on here, so you're not going to get the same brewing as if I'd done it directly from a kettle. That might be why it tastes under-extracted. Whatever it is, you're coming on the den, your numbers don't add up. Let me tell you why. So in the last 12 months, no, what have no, you turned I've over? I've not had a product until the end of January. The product didn't come into the okay, country until January. OK, from January to June, six months, what will your turnover be? January to June? Yeah. This, well, what I've you only started selling to distributors this month. I've done £20,000 in total, all channels, this month's sales. Of that, I've got £11,000 profit, GP, and the net profit currently this month, taking into consideration all of my costs for this month, is four and a half thousand. Okay, twenty thousand pounds this month. If you add it all up, it'll come to two hundred and forty thousand pounds for the year. So how do you get a million one? Well, I've been, we're only halfway through the month, so I've allowed forty thousand pound in my second year. But no, but you're saying this first year you'll do one point one. So, sorry, not my second year. Sorry, t t sorry, to get, sorry, I'm confusing. Matthew. Yeah. With all due respect. Your numbers are all over the place. I'm not going to invest in you, and I'm out. Man down, as Tuka Suleiman reaches boiling point over Matthew's lack of grasp of his company's figures. 
Now Deborah Meaden is thirsty to find out more about the marketplace for his product. Matthew, can I ask right now, where do most people buy their to-go coffee cups? I would guess that e-tail is the biggest in terms of selling the products. So people buying that product, it would be mainly sort of Amazons of this world. OK, at the moment, you could, couldn't tell me how many are sold or what the main routes to market are on the to-go coffee cups. It's a good question. The only thing is, I would say that there's a real split in terms of people are using it at home a lot. They're not just taking it out coffee to go. So you don't, you don't have any idea how many, the size of the market, and much more important, the route to market? I don't... I, I'm... You really should know your market. And I wholeheartedly agree with Deborah. You really need to know everything. You need to understand your numbers, and you need to come in and deliver it. And the next thing is, I don't think it's very well made. OK, why, why would you well, say that? Well, this doesn't even hold down. It, it does, doesn't it? It does not. No, that one doesn't. So isn't it supposed to hold down shut as well? It yes. should do, yeah. But it does, mine doesn't. You, it, no, this one is... Uh, you're, you're, you know, if Deborah's doesn't either close, this is really shoddy. When you came in and your pitch, it looks, wow, this could be unique. This is really good. I really think you could have something. And then... Then the lid, yeah. I think what I would say in response to that is that I can obviously return the lids. We have checked them. We are, remember, it's only the first... You fir can't have checked this one. And you can't have checked Deborah's. I checked every facet apart from opening the lid, yeah. You're right, OK. You need to bring in a product that you've at least checked, because 40% of the product doesn't work. Matthew's back in trouble as two faulty lids draw the wrath of Peter Jones. Can Tej Lalvani add a much-needed shot of positivity to the inventor's struggling pitch? My issue is the product itself. I mean, the whole idea about coffee is enjoying the experience, and I don't think I'll enjoy the experience while drinking in this big, massive mug. I can see what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, it's a nice idea, but I don't think this is the solution. And, 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 and for that reason, um, I'm out. OK. Your problem with this is, for me, and this is the most disappointing thing, the only reason I could see why that will ever survive in the marketplace is that the taste is better. And without an absolute champion can I that just, says, wow... Can I put one point forward? OK. The one feedback that we've had is that it makes a good cup of coffee. It does have something to do with extraction. If, you cut, if your hot water's not hot enough, it doesn't extract the coffee enough. And then, because the ump stops the brewing process, that's it then. It's not going to get any better. If I could make you another coffee, it would taste mm. knockout. I'm sorry, it's just that when you put your heart and soul into eight years, you don't want to let go. I would expect you to say that. Of course you'll defend the taste of the coffee. Unfortunately, I'm looking to invest and I needed to see it today. So I'm afraid I won't be investing, Matthew. I'm out. OK, thank you. Deborah Meaden is the third dragon to ditch the deal, unconvinced that Matthew's coffee has the oomph to make the grade. And her exit has got Peter Jones wondering about Matthew's entrepreneurial credentials. What is your background? What have you done before this? I've got yeah. a set of business up before. Yeah, I set up, set up my a coffee machine business that sells directly to uh, restaurants, cafes, um, bars, offices. My wife has ran that for the last year to allow me to, to that, take to the... So office. you've got another business? I have, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what does that turn over? 1.5 million. You've got another business that turns out 1.5 million? Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> right, yeah. And how long has that been going? 11 years. And how much profit did you make last year? 20,000 and we bought our premises as well. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say, Matthew, that is amazing. Congratulations. It's clearly the pressure of this environment that's doing you an injustice, because I would have definitely said that you're completely naive in terms of business. I understand and that. And you're clearly not. 
That yeah. might have just saved me from going out, actually. Thank heavens for that. <laughs> How did that feel for you, that moment? Like, because you clearly... It felt like that was a turning point. I felt I should have brought it out sooner. Matthew, you have done the most uninvestable pitch today in a potentially investable product and probably an investable entrepreneur. It's frustrating. However, I think you probably are worth, and I'll call it a punt at this stage. So I am going to make you an offer. Look at your grin. <laughs> but I'll warn you now that you're going to make me the best coffee I've ever tasted. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I'd want 15% of the business. 15%. A lifeline, as Jenny Campbell spots potential in Matthew and his coffee maker. But the offer of £40,000 is for three times the equity he wanted to give away. Can he now extract a rival bid from his old adversary, Peter Jones? Matthew, I think that you've learnt probably a lot by coming in today. Um, I've spent most of my life selling. It's quite annoying when you fail on a demonstration. Look, you've just got the most amazing offer, um, um, and I think that this is a long way away from being a product that people will buy, and there'll be a lot of work needed to, to bring this to market, and that's the reason why I'm not going to invest today and say that I'm out. OK. Peter Jones's exit leaves Jenny Campbell as the only dragon with an offer on the table. Would you give me one minute just to have a thing? I'll give you one okay? minute. Thank you. But as she wants 15% of his company, the entrepreneur has a tricky decision to make. I'd be uh, very happy to accept your offer, Jenny. Right. <laughs> Let's fix this product. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. OK. But business, much like the den itself, is unpredictable, and there's been a further twist in Matthew's story since he sealed the deal with Jenny. Where's your business now? Because Jenny isn't part of it, is she? She's not, no. Why? Jenny was great. What you saw there is her. She, she came over, she spent time with us and the team, but we already had an investor and we couldn't get the legals to match with both sides, but we've turned over just over half a million and it would have been quicker with Jenny, with the money and with the help, but I am where I am and I've just, mm. got, to, I've just got to make the most out of it. Do the lids work? <laughs> yeah, the, li the lids worked after two phone calls. Um, so, yeah, the lids do work. Yeah, yeah good, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, oh, Matthew, for welcome. going through all that. I no. hope it wasn't too painful. No, it wasn't. No, you've, uh, you're mildly better than a dragon. Mildly. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. Okay. Yeah, this is like X Factor. <laughs>